Hey, what's up guys? So why are scales so important? Scales are a fundamental element in music. There, there's a lot in music that is not only scales, but understanding the framework, understanding how things uh, respond and relate to, to each other is huge. Today, we're gonna talk about how to play and master scales in four steps. It might seem like a, a bold statement, but it will take time. We will need to practice it, but once things are clear and the pathway is clear, it's just about practicing it and putting time in a really, really clear and organized manner. So first, why do we actually want to play scales? It's helpful to understand the context and the sort of like the environment that music takes place. And it's kind of that. So understanding, you know, your neighborhood and area and how the roads connect is sort of like, to me, understanding, you know, C major or F major scale. So what we're gonna do right now is just really dive in directly and just start working on this. If you do these four steps and work on it consistently, you will be able to create music faster, better, and with more ease because you will understand, you will hear, and you will technically, the muscle memory will be there to create music. So let's do this. One. This is extremely important. So when I start playing scales, I just try to play the position back and forth a hundred times, more like a hundred thousand times. But what we're gonna do right now is we first going to understand, listen and sing the relationship within the major scale. I'm gonna take F just because it's early. steps will take care of all the positions and all the exercise to really master this idea of the scales within guitar but this is important so this is the two this is how the two sounds Question, what is the best exercise you ever worked on for scales? Please drop a comment because I definitely want to check that one out. Thanks. C, F, Do, Re, D. This is how the six sounds and feels. So what I'm doing, I'm just listening to each one of the individual notes. So I'm trying to feel and kind of tag in my mind the tension that I feel when I hear F against A or F against G or F against F to the resolution. So understanding the sounds and trying to map and create a, almost an emotional um, imagery for that sound in relationship to the center is crucial because this is basically music, the tension and release those relationships. So please do not skip or fast forward this important step because right now we're gonna deal with all the fingerings and all the technical stuff. But again, we wanna make sure that we're hearing it, that we're listening it to it and that we're seeing it. So just making sure that we kind of like tag the information at all times. All right, so I know this is a lot of information, but basically what we're trying to do is um, get you to a more free place. And I do believe that if you're gonna work on these elements, you will uh, succeed. So take your time, go slow, and really try to internalize each part of the element and try to remember 
step four, which is really making music and find time within your practice to make music. I think going into the lab, if you will, and practicing is important, but also going to the playground and messing with the information and seeing it in different ways, writing lines, transcribing lines, finding ideas from external sources, they're all positive and will highlight more music. Two, framework. All right, so we chose F, I guess I chose F. And we're gonna do it in three notes per string. We're gonna divide basically the guitar into seven um, positions. Again, there are many options to, to see F major scale, but I'm just taking that. The reason I wanna take it is also because we can also use three techniques with this one. We can play it alternate picking, we can play it legato, and we can do kind of a mix where we do alternate picking for the first two and hammer or pull off for the last. We'll do all these options right now. So it will take a minute, but it is worth our investment of time. So let's check it out each position separately, and then we'll do it with the three techniques, and let's go. I'm keeping this F just so we hear the center. Sometimes I'll sing it throughout the, the exercise. Right now, I just kind of want to talk it through. So I'm going to show you the fingerings, and this is F major. I'm using these fingerings, so one, two, four here for the first two strings. One, two, four, still that. but definitely tell yourself F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F I would sing along and I would slow it down I'm not playing in time, right? I'm just kind of like taking my time right now and look how I'm like taking this time and making sure that the sounds are clear because again, music is, is all about sound at the end of the day so you want to make sure this is clear so we can play it alternate picking like I just did, right? This kind of option where I just literally alternate pick up and down, up and down, and or down, up, both are fine. But now I can also play this position in two other techniques and we'll do the same thing with the other uh, positions. But first let's kind of nail this one. So I can also play it with all um, kind of legato. So I'll play one note and hit the other two. Again, I'm not playing in time just yet. I'm just kind of setting the scene. Now notice, even when I'm doing this, I'm trying to get sound happening from all three fingers. So uh, it's not kind of like super loud and super soft. It's I'm trying to get a balanced sound. Later on we'll play it faster, but for now I would just try to teach my fingers, my brain, brain and my ears where things are. So this is the second technique where we work on legato. When we're descending it's pull off, so I'm playing the first note and kind of pulling off the other two. The third technique that we're gonna also do is playing basically a mix of these two ideas. So we'll play uh, alternate picking for the first two and hammer on for the last one. So and the same thing descending, playing the first two and hammer on on the last one. If you want to support the best way to do it probably is by checking the Patreon. There's a ton of stuff here, uh, there, uh, including a PDF for this video and um, actually a lot of PDFs for a lot of things, uh, things I practice, things I work on. You can check it out and uh, yeah, thank you. All right, so this is first position F major. I'm gonna still keep the F happening because I'm hearing all this as F. I'm not thinking about it as modes. I'm really thinking about it as, as F major. So this is from G. I'm gonna play alternate picking. I'm 
want to start saying the name of the notes as well. And then I would, again, usually I'll play the whole kind of fingerboard with one technique and then shift to the other. Right now I'm just gonna go over these three ideas. So um, now um, legato. So. And again, you see it's not in time. I'm just kind of like slowly telling myself and my brain where things are. Sometimes when I work on the legato stuff, on the last ring I'll slide, so I have this like one, two, three. So this would be again a one. You don't have to. Then the mix, the hybrid, so. Still thinking about the center of F. Let's sing F just to hear the notes. Second technique, just hammer on and pull off the legato idea. Just mapping it, I would probably play the, f the same position a few times, you know, so my fingers kind of see it. feels hard or if maybe there is some noise from the string so I'll try to make sure I'm maybe kind of muting if I need to when I'm shifting the strings um, from B flat sounds a little overwhelming but once you start working on this and again you can play the alternate picking a few times take your time and kind of like teach your fingers where things are sometimes when I'm playing these things especially with the metronome I'll kind of like hit the string a little harder so I'll do like it's like almost like Helpful. Then the second thing with the alternate uh, with legato. So and descending. And then the hybrid. And then again, hearing the notes and relationships. Next one is C from here, this area. This is also, you know, people think about it as mixolydian. It's totally fine. I right now think about it again in the context of F. Let's sing it together. And when you're playing this, again, try to make sure that the two hands are synced and if they're not ask yourself why so i think a lot of times when we practice things and they're not clear 
clear, it's because there's too many variables that we're not paying attention to, right? So maybe it's this hand, maybe it's this hand, maybe we're not hearing it, maybe we don't know the notes, maybe the, you know, the relationship within the framework of a major scale is not clear to us, for example, whole step, whole step, half step, um, whole, 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 half, right? Just that sound of relationship within F, maybe that's not clear, so we need to make sure that's really clear. From D, so one, Understand the framework and understand the sounds of the scale and again, of course, it will take some time if this is all new for you But now we're gonna do a few permutations the idea with permutation is basically seeing the same piece of information From a slightly different angle what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one position just for time sakes because I, I don't need to do really all seven right now we'll take um, just the first one F major three note per string and we'll do a few intervals so we'll do major thirds uh, i mean thirds fourth fifth sixth and seventh um and and then we'll play everything in time with a few subdivisions these are again essential elements to kind of see the framework in a different light it's not the only way of course and you can find your own permutation you can mix ideas Everything is valid. We're trying to kind of like see the process of breaking something down and finding the music within it. So let's go. Thirds. I'm gonna play it in the position here on the first position, and I'm not gonna play it in time just yet, just kind of slowly trying to understand what to do. I'm basically skipping one note. I'm not trying to play it super fast. Just trying to hear the color now with all these things you can write it down and then you'll see all the variables right so if I'm writing that idea down and saying like okay thirds ascending okay of course I can do descending and I can do ascending descending descending ascending different permutations but for now just start with ascending thirds then I'll do the same thing and try to do it harmonic so instead of melodic I'll try to hear how it sounds with two notes, so... Right, so when I'm playing that, you almost kind of hear the, the scale and the chords. So I'm really thinking... Fa, F major... Like, E diminished, you know, like the seventh, but it's a minor third. But I, I'm aware of the sounds and kind of like the... Um, almost the chords, I would say. So. So when I'm playing like F to, to E minor, or you know, again, just the third is E diminished, so I, I'm kind of aware of that relationship. So I think I would play that slow and making sure that I can hear it and see it. Then I'll go to the next interval. Fourth, play it melodic first. And if you think about it, the triton will be on the fourth degree. And uh, yeah, that's it, only the fourth degree. The rest is just a perfect fourth. So it's you can also have your kind of fingers in a shape like this if you want to. I like to try and see it in a in a kind of a part of the framework of the scale. And sometimes I'll play the same thing, just kind of see the the harmonic shape of it the same way we did with the thirds. Fifths. Um, a lot of times I'll just try and stay in an area. But sometimes you can just grab this shape like I'm doing right now and basically move it around. You see I'm kind of like staying with this interval and, and running it across the shape. Um, the shape. 
shape of the the scale of the three note string so it's this kind of shape but sometimes I will decide that I want to stay and not move too much with my hand so then I'll you know I'll have to kind of skip strings a little bit I think both are good um, it just depends on what you want and sometimes it's it is sometimes faster and it's kind of cool to have that sound but sometimes it's good to see and hear how you know it relates in terms of, of notes and strings when we cross over um, the strings yeah we can do it also harmonically so to do these things is helpful just to see the framework um, but don't go crazy don't try to play it super super fast sixth this is a classic guitar sound we use a lot so let's do it kind of slower um, major six it's so so beautiful just, just hearing that sound again and I'm working with this on the framework of you see the position, I'm like really on it, right? I'm really on this like framework. So I would play it like that, kind of slow. And then I would try to hear it as an interval, as a, as a harmonic sound. few points that we can shift the fingerings but in general I would try to kind of optimize to stay around here take your time with this it's 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 a process the last one we'll do here the seventh a little more aggressive sounding but again the point of this is that we want to just like hear the relationships and see the scale with this one I guess I am thinking pretty much about uh, the chords so I'm kind of thinking like oh this is B flat and A but kind of like maybe I'm imagining almost B flat major 7 A you know A minor G minor F major 7 sometimes I, I'll just kind of see the, the, the shape or the interval if you will but sometimes it will be more like oh it's, I kind of hear it as a chord if you hear it as a chord maybe it's a little less aggressive These are just a few different ways, right, to just see this scale with intervals. I know this will take some time, but I think, you know, we're here to make things happen. So if you care about guitar music and, and you want to master scales, whatever master means to you, um, then I would definitely work on these elements and try to lock things in in a clear way. Now, the second part of this is playing it in time. I'm gonna take one position here and play the subdivisions of chord notes, eight notes, triplet, and 16. Just the scale first. Let's check it out. This is my faithful metronome on 60 BPM. Here we go. F major, three note per string, chord notes. So trying to feel the pulse, trying to feel the groove. Just playing scale. Again. be centered, trying to be aware, and then shifting to eight notes. And I would spend some time on each one of the subdivisions until it's clear, and you can sing it as well. Etc, etc. So just like knowing the notes, hearing it, listening to it, and kind of like letting Self absorb the information, and then once you feel comfortable, we'll shift the triplets. Once I do that, 
that I might go back to triples. you can hear that relationship to the beat with the subdomain. If you've never done uh, quarter notes, eight notes, triple and sixteen, just tap it, you know, just make sure that you can hear the relation between the click and that subdivision and then place it on the scale. I wouldn't try to play crazy fast, the same idea, we want to internalize the information and that goes also for the third. So just playing all these ideas, not crazy fast, but in time and being able to just, you know, articulate that in time. Whether it's harmonic, you know, melodic, all these ideas could be placed in time. It doesn't need to be fast again, it just needs to be clear in time. I would also do that uh, throughout the guitar, right? Through the seven positions. I would do each position separately to first learn the shape, and then I would start mixing it. So basically, the goal here is not to really say like, oh, position one, two, three. No, no, no. This is just kind of like a, a temporary kind of like framework. At the end of it, we just want to say like, oh, I'm playing, you know, F major, whatever F major is around, I can grab it. That's that's the goal. Because it's just, it's just, it's just a scale. It's just a melody. So we want to be aware of that. Four. This is probably the most important one. So we've done all this work of mapping and articulating different angles of F and listening and, and trying to see all these things, but this is probably a, between 45 to 50% of the process. What we now need to do is create. We need to make music with it. One of the best ways I feel is just to mess around quite literally. Um, so we'll do two things. First, I'm just gonna loop in time again F major, I'll play F, a couple of chords, let's see what happens. F A minor, G minor, and C sus. So, I'll try and find an idea, like a melody. And I'll try to repeat once I like the melody. Okay. Maybe that. Again. Now, I'll take a certain framework of you know the F position and I'll just kind of be around one thing and I'll try to repeat a melody and then I'll try to mess around with that and and go around the scale but just basically soloing but you know kind of trying to find mini bites of, of pockets of things I dig <laughs> some thirds. So again, I'm not trying to play the whole exercise of thirds, but I will try to incorporate a sound that I'm working on. So if I'm, you know, working on these six that we talked about, right, just a little bit, it doesn't need to be the whole guitar, but just like, Maybe and you know and you can pause yourself and say like ah I'm trying to play the sixth here but I don't see it okay that's great so then you pause you pause a loop you pause it and you say let me check again the framework of F major in this area let me make sure that the you know sixth if this is what we're trying to get are clear and if they're not it's totally fine we'll work on that but i think a lot of times the improvisation and the music music actually the music making will kind of inform us of what we need to do instead of just uh, spending hundreds of hours 
playing all the options and then we have no music. I think it needs to be um, kind of to go hand in hand. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this was helpful and not too much. And I'll see you guys very soon.